welcome to the Infinity Bros podcast, the only podcast that is perfectly balanced as all things should be. My name is Isaac Edlin. I'm your host tonight. And uh, joining me on our podcast of six rotating hosts is one of our other fellow Infinity Bros, Mark Jones. Glad to be back. You guys bust me out of my hyperbaric chamber for one more podcast or a few more. I don't know. Depends if the guys throw me back in, but I'm here. Talk about Star Wars. <laughs> well, yeah, we'll see if you if you deserve to be outside of it for a while here. So we'll see how this <laughs> podcast goes, and we'll <laughs> and then it'll be brought to the council, yeah. <laughs> brought to the council of the Infinity Bros, and we'll we'll continue to you know evaluate. Oh, they just brought what's the 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 lanterns circle called or whatever, like the high. Um, you you have no, any idea what I'm talking about? I don't know. Yeah, I don't. I like I've seen like pictures of it, but I don't know what it's called. We go to the High Council for the Infinity Bros, and it's just a bunch of variants of Jared. Like it's none of us. <laughs> yeah, all of them are Jared. Yeah, I could definitely see that for sure. Yeah, he would be the one that would be behind everything, wouldn't he? Well, guys, we have a lot of news to get to today. Um, welcome back, though, Mark. I'm I'm very excited to be on this episode with you. It's a blessing. Um, you and and Zane have uh, <laughs> blessed blessed to be a blessing. That's what we say. Uh, you and Zane have like transported minds, bodies. Maybe not minds, just bodies or something. You're kind of flip flopping. Zane has been on the podcast quite a bit, um, talking about mostly. I feel like he's been he was on with us almost every episode with the Last of Us reviews that we were doing because he was our our Last of Us expert. And yeah, he continues to make a strong showing and Mark is caught up with life. And, you know, I, we were talking about on the Patreon exclusive portion uh, of, of the podcast. I'm, I'm right there with you, man. Like having a third kid is no joke. I am more tired the last like four months than I ever have been in my entire life. I am not right with you, Isaac. I don't have three children. I have one child. In the sense of just life, life is, yeah, is going sure. on right now. Yeah. So, but yeah, it's, I mean, you know, we've been going through it and Mark's, Mark's finally getting moved in and, and getting his new desk desk space all set up down there. So hopefully we'll be able to convince him to join us for more podcasts. Supposed here. to paint the wall sometime soon. What are you, are you going to paint it black? I wanted to. And then Kelly said, no, my wife, but my beautiful wife, Kelly said, no. So, but it's going to be a lava red is what was compromised. Ooh, oh, so. wow. She Wait, she said no to black, but she was okay with red? Well, the red's a little, like, that. it's a, it's the type of color where you could still paint over it with a light color if you needed to. Oh, okay. For black, sure, it's, right. you know, it's really hard to, you know, paint a room yellow after it's been painted black, so. Yeah, that's true. I get that. But, yeah, um, definitely excited to have you back on. But we've got lots of stuff to get to today. We're talking all things Star Wars we're going to be going through some of the Star Wars celebration news from um, a week ago here. Might be the first time hearing about it for Mark. So we'll we'll see how it goes. Um, and then we're also going to be reviewing The Mandalorian, um, ep- Season 3, Episode 7, Chapter 23, The Spies, on, on the back end of this episode. In anticipation of The Mandalorian finale, which is coming out, probably pretty shortly after this episode drops, honestly. So yeah, pretty wild that this season is coming to a close already. I feel like it just goes by so stinking fast. You know, before we get into it, Mark, did you watch Bad Batch season I two? I have not started Bad Batch season two yet. Oh, okay, gotcha. Well, now you can binge it because it's all, it's all on out. Disney+. Plus. Well, there it is. It's all there. Catch, catch um, right up. Zane and I were going to review it a couple weeks ago, but we didn't get around to it. It was a solid season. I'd say like, uh, I'd give it a five out of six. It was really good. I like the, I like the first season. So first season was really fun. I think I gave the first season a similar rating, probably like five or five and a half out of six or something. Does Jar Jar Binks show up at all? I am not at liberty to say. So, oh, oh. <laughs> we'll keep you, keep you in does, anticipation. Does a Sith Jar Jar Pink show up? <laughs> <I'm>, <laughs> I guess I gotta I'm watch not, this. Season. I'm not saying anything. You gotta watch it and find out. Would would recommend though. Definitely, if you guys are are fans of um, Clone Wars and Star Wars Rebels, both 
incredible shows. Bad Batch is an amazing spinoff and addition to the Star Wars universe. It's really, really fun. And set after Order 66. Well, kind of during, honestly, because well, yeah. that first season, yeah, the first season we get, I, I don't even remember what episode it is, but we get that Order 66 moment. Yeah. And give me, give me all the Order 66 moments, man. It's like similar to the snap in Marvel. I'll take them all. I'll make, just watch. Make our I'll watch all of them. Really live through Order 66. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> For real, dude. Oh, gosh. It is, that is our generation, man. We're, we're just keep reliving it, reliving it over and over and over again. All right. Star Wars celebration. <laughs> Let's move on to something more. Popular. No, I just, I just thought of the meme where it's like, you know, pre Disney Jedis who survived order 66 and then post Disney, it's like a thousand Jedis survived. order 66. I think I chatted so. about this with Robbie at some point, but if you think about it, I think I saw a TikTok that was like projecting that there were anywhere from, 500 to a thousand Jedi during order 66. So even if they were able to, you know, purge or, or kill a majority of the Jedi, it wouldn't be surprising if we had even a hundred or more surviving. I think there's Jedi, way Jedi, more than two like. to 3000. Cause you just think of the battle of Genosis, the amount of Jedi that were there helping the fight. And that was that one battle. There's gotta be way more than. Yeah, that's true. But anyways, and yeah, that like, wasn't wasn't that it's, far it's after not Attack hard to of the think Clones. A hundred Jedi would have survived, right? Yeah, definitely, definitely would be reasonable. I feel like to have hundred or more hundreds potentially of Jedi that survived, and I, yeah, if we get more stories surrounding new Jedi that survive the purge, like that's something I'm totally here for. I'm gonna talk about these in one of these. Uh, one of these uh, announcements. So, all right, we're just going to kind of hit some of these big ones that, uh, that they went over. Star Wars celebration was in, in Europe, 2023. One of these days, like someday when we're all like, you know, our kids are all like out of the house and stuff. I feel like we got to make an, uh, an infinity bros trip too. When to we're all retired age. When we're all retired age and we're all old creepy dudes at Star Wars celebration. <laughs> to get real, like I just had this thought the other day. It's like, wow, if we have two more kids by the time they're old enough or like graduated high school, I'll be like almost 60. <laughs> yeah, dude. I know. Isn't that wild to think about? It hit me. It hit me pretty hard this week when I was thinking about moving that. Moving on, moving on. Anyways. <laughs> get that out of my head. All right. <laughs> don't think about it all right first thing i want to talk about is the ahsoka trailer did you get a chance to catch this this is on all over social media so you probably i, I did saw this watch i saw like really i saw like um a still from the trailer but i haven't dude i'm telling okay. you like my life has just been uh i'm like strapped into a race car and someone else is driving and i feel like i'm in death race I'm not leading the charge. I'm just driving the car. I'm going to send this to you in the group chat because this is something you as I mean, you're you are one of the biggest Star Wars fans I know. So this is something that you are going to absolutely go bonkers over. So we got another. I guess so. It's not another. It's the first Ahsoka trailer. We got I think we got like just teases and posters and stuff like that prior to this. But um, we got a trailer was revealed. Ahsoka to know comes out and she's, you know, doing battling bad dudes with two lightsabers, doing sweet like jumps, flips, all the Ahsoka stuff that we love. Rosario Dawson um, is coming back as Ahsoka. She absolutely killed it in Mandalorian and in Book of Boba Fett. Uh, did fantastic job as uh, Ahsoka Tano. Um, and we this is the big thing in this trailer. We we know that this trailer or this show, Ahsoka, is going to be involving Thrawn somehow. Because she mentioned that in The Mandalorian. And Thrawn, uh, for those, you know, people who may not be super deep into the Star Wars universe, uh, is a major character in Rebels. Um, he's got several Star Wars novels, which Mark has read. I'm, 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 they're and, on my list. And was pre-Disney like Disney involved, like in the book. Yes, pre-Disney so. 
technically probably counts as like what extended universe, like not yeah, I don't know. canon no. now since Disney took over or whatever. But you know, Rebels is canon. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Rebels is Disney. Um, so Thrawn is going to be a major character, but with the major association from Rebels. We kind of thought, yeah, we're gonna. We've gotten castings of the, these rebel characters, the Ghost Crew. Um, we got a lot, a Excuse lot me? of sightings. Are you saying like live action the- rebel characters? Yes, no. Mark. No. That's why I'm saying you need to watch this trailer because you are going to love it. We saw Sabine Wren, we saw Harrison Dilla, we saw Chopper, and um, obviously Ahsoka. We got a very slight hologram image of Ezra Bridger. Um, we didn't see Zeb, but we did see him in the la- latest episode of the Mandalorian. Not this latest one, but the one previous to that. I, I remember so we saw Zeb. I, I po- when I when when I saw him in the Mandalorian episode, I pointed at Kelly. He's like, he's in Rebels. He's a- <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes, he's in Rebels. Oh, what is that? Oh my I, gosh. I literally was like, if, if he's there, then the other people are there. And she's like, what are you talking about? I was like, I want to watch it. Yes. <laughs> Yeah, Kelly's just like, what the heck? That's exactly what my how my oh my gosh. So little side notes, we're watching The Mandalorian, and, and she's like, I don't remember like the stuff with like she's like Luke was in it or like in The Mandalorian. It's like, yeah, I don't even not remember. Uh, like, we, gotta, we gotta start all over from the beginning of all the Star Wars stuff. And watch. Oh, I was like, darn. and then I explained <laughs> if you want to do that, here's everything with the watch, and she's like, oh, God. like just like like she like doesn't want to do it, but like is totally all in. So. Mm. That's yeah. that's amazing, dude. I I still haven't gotten Holly to watch that with me. I she loves like what she sees of it with me, but she won't like sit down <laughs> and watch every single episode with me. So pats your head, She's like oh Isaac. <laughs> she literally does. Yeah, I see Grogu and I just like freak out, and she's like, oh oh Isaac, I I love you. So I, <laughs> but anyways, yeah, we saw we got live action shots of almost all of those characters in this trailer. And it is, it's phenomenal, dude. I am so, so excited for this show. Rebels, honestly, is one of my favorite um, Star Wars, like, properties. Because the story in Rebels is absolutely six out of six. I, I would give Rebels a six out of six. There are some things about it that, like, I'm not crazy about. Like, it's definitely, like, kind of, it's very simple animation geared for like children and a lot of the dialogue is very simple and geared for children as well. But the storyline is just elite top tier star Wars content in rebels. Does Kanan, um, does he die? Yeah, he dies in, in rebels. Okay. That's what I thought. I was, cause I was saying like, do they, do they bring Freddie Prince jr. To play him in live action? That was my, my thought. And I just couldn't remember. Honestly, I wouldn't be shocked. Um, I, we could get some like flashbacks, maybe, you know, I could see it. And this is, this is, you know, also several years down the road. Gosh, I'm trying to, I don't know exactly where the I timeline Rebels, Rebels happened is, but during between episodes five and six, I'll, I'll Google it. You No, it would have been before episode four. Cause it's the start of the rebellion. Was it? I thought it was after. But it's, it's like immediately before episode four, if I'm recalling correctly. So this is like roughly 10 to 15 years later after the after the events of Rebels, I think. If I'm if I'm not, you know, mistaken in the, my timeline. But man, this is this is going to be probably one of my shows of the year. I think this is this is incredible. I'm going to let you watch that before I spoil the whole thing, Mark. But there's the one thing I did want to talk to. You just just spoil it. It's fine. Oh, okay. Okay, you're right. It is. It is before. And then it slowly goes a little bit afterwards. Okay. So the big like timeline marker that they use is the Battle of Yavin, which is um, episode four. So that's like zero is the Battle of Yavin. So Rebels is like immediately before that Mandalorian is set like nine. A like nine A-B-Y years after. is how they nine years after the Battle of Yavin. So it, it's like roughly 10 years after this events of Rebels. 
So like they're older, they're more, you know, I mean, and they were very capable in rebels, but they're probably more experienced now. And, and we, we know that she's trying to hunt down Thrawn. He's involved somehow. We know that Ezra is not currently with this crew. So the question is like, are they trying to find Ezra Bridger as well as Thrawn? Cause they were taken off together, you know, in the final episode of, of rebels that'll be really interesting to find out and i'm really really excited for this show um i give this trailer a five out of six for sure very very excited for it who would they cast for thrawn did they cast the voice actor for him yes yes they did lars uh is it mickelson 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 um which i i know we kind of had speculated like Like, why not just pick him (laughs) yeah why not just pick him exactly and I'm, I'm, and, and there's a shot of Thrawn in this trailer too. Like blue so, skin, red eyed Thrawn. Yes. He doesn't, he doesn't turn around. It's like the back of his head, but like he's, he's blue. <laughs> he's, it's Thrawn. Blue. And they say they're talking about Thrawn during the whole trailer too. So like, obviously it's Thrawn, but so like they, we do get two bad dudes in this. Um, so that explains why, well, when we talk about the episode, why he was being talked about. So they're, yes. they're clearly going to mash up Mandalorian and Ahsoka. At we'll some talk point. about this when we review Mando, but I would not be shocked if we get appearances from maybe Ahsoka, a mention of Thrawn in the final episode of the Mandalorian, some kind of lead in to Ahsoka potentially um, at the end of the season three of the Mandalorian um, would not be surprising. So we'll talk about that a little bit when we review Mandalorian, but so there's two bad guys that in this trailer that had lightsabers that were like orange. They're bringing, they're finally making orange a legitimate lightsaber in the universe. Yeah. And, and they, they kind of like, it's kind of hard to tell just like in the lighting of the, like you kind of think they're red right away, but the more you see, it's like, these are, these are orange. Like these are orange lightsabers. Um, so I'm really excited to see if they if they have like an explanation for that or if that's something that they're just going to be like, yeah, these are bad guys and they have orange lightsabers. I'm like, I don't know. Who knows? From what I remember, I think the orange lightsabers, the what do they refer to them as like the gray Jedi? I yeah, orange is the one color that I don't recall anything about. Gray Jedi had a foot in both sides of the force and hadn't committed fully to either the light or the dark. Cause I think, mm. I think yellow also lies in that. And that's what like was the well, foreshadowing. I thought, yellow, I thought yellow represented like uh Jedi, like sentinels, like the <sighs> like guardians of the temple I mean, and stuff like that too. While I'm here, why don't I just look up? Might as well look it up. Yeah. Oh yeah. You're right. It's sentinel. So own their skin skills and the balance and scholarly pursuits of the Jedi. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Love that. But yeah, the orange lightsabers look sweet. Um, and then obviously we have Ahsoka and she's got like the white, like silver sabers and whew, whew, the lights, the Star Wars fan in us is just like, oh gosh. Oh yeah. I'm so excited for this. Oh man. It's going to be great. Um, anyways, yes, uh, Mark, lots of things to look forward to with this Ahsoka trailer. Um, what's your hype level for Ahsoka right now? I'm all in. Oh, yeah. I feel like, you know, for sure. A, a six, a you know, nine out of six, you know. <laughs> nine out of six. Got it. <laughs> so um, uh, did they say how many episodes it was going to be? Because like the selfish me wants 12 episodes, but I'm sure we're going to get like six or eight. Yeah, um, let me see here if they announce anything about that. And then if it's like six or eight, like, are we going to get 25 minute episodes or are we going to get like a 45 plus and like an actual 45 plus and like the nine minutes is extra. So it's like a 55 minute episode is actually just nine minutes as credits. Yeah, I don't think they announced anything about the length of the episodes, about the if there's um, a trailer, how many they episodes are going to be. A lot of it filmed. You said it was just dropped. The only thing the they really film. announced with the actual airtime or whatever is August. They said August. It okay, was so coming. I don't know year. if that's confirmed. It's this year. Yeah, it's coming in okay. like what is August? Four, three and a half months. So it's not. It's not that far away, honestly. 
and I don't know if they've confirmed anything since Star Wars Celebration about like, you know, if there's a date or anything, but the trailer at the end of the trailer, it says coming August. So we're getting Ahsoka pretty soon. Going to be reviewing that on the podcast in 2023. Very excited for that trailer. All right. Next thing. Next. This, these are like the two, the few biggest ones that I want to talk about. Three new Star Wars movies announced, and these have kind of been rumored. What, involving Ray or something? Yes, that's one of them. <clears throat> so, Well, how about that? <laughs> one of them. So three new Star Wars movies announced. This is not a connected trilogy. They are at different times in the Star Wars like timeline. Time but they period. announced three movies. Three movies. Uh, yeah. So helming the movies are James Mangold. James Mangold's movie will go back to the dawn of the Jedi. That's pretty much all the information we got about before the old Republic. Yes. The dawn of the Jedi. Wow. Dave Filoni will be directing one. His will focus on the new Republic and close out the interconnected stories told in the Mandalorian book of Boba Fett, Ahsoka, and possibly other Disney plus series. So that one is telling us that here's, here's how everything's going to end type of movie. Potentially, okay. um, yeah, we might get all in. You know, I'm, I already have my money. Yeah, depending on how Mandalorian ends, we could get. I would assume that we're getting more seasons of the Mandalorian too. I don't know where on the timeline that all fits in with this movie. Not really sure, but like we could be seeing Dingerin, Boba Fett, Ahsoka, you know, possibly you know the Rebel crew back in this movie. New Republic, like, is the setting of this movie. So before the events of the sequel trilogy, the third one is going to be directed by Charmin Obed Chonoy, who Marvel fans might recognize as the director of Miss Marvel, which makes us a little, maybe oh, a little yeah. wary. Well, we'll have my money, but just, just I'll barely have handed it over. I'll be like, here you go. <laughs> you are still definitely going to this. Don't get me wrong. I saw Miss Marvel. So like, you know, At least there, I had other things to see on Disney+. Plus. Oh, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. But anyways, this film will be set after the events of Star Wars Rise of Skywalker. Okay. I I did see this because I feel like I talked about this in the group. Yeah, this one will feature Daisy Ridley back as Rey. Like, they announced that as at Star Wars Celebration, that she will be coming back in this movie. I wish they didn't kill Kylo if they're going to, like, I wish he was still alive. I agree with that because I've seen a lot of like, you know, discourse online and like, I feel like their stories were so intertwined and interconnected that it's going to be kind of weird to see a solo story with Ray. And, and what is it going to be her and Chewbacca? Like, right? Like, cause that's kind of. And, and <laughs> so the, the tagline here for this is that she it will feature Daisy Ridley back as Rey as she builds a new Jedi Order. So, and the, well, and clearly there's going to be some form of bad person in this. I would assume so. Like, I mean, I'm sure Grogu. you know there's movies Grogu's out a there. Bad Grogu. Guy. <laughs> He's the bad guy. Oh man, I'd actually love to see Grogu as a bad dude. That would be <laughs> that would be awesome. Teenage S Grogu, like all of a sudden he just becomes a teenager. Teenage S Grogu, and he's got Mandalorian armor <gasps> with a red lightsaber. It'd be all in. Okay. Okay. Yeah. I'm 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 interested. For that to happen, they, that means Din Djarin got murdered at some point. <laughs> oh yeah. He, Grogu definitely took him out. <laughs> he was the first one to go. <laughs> no, I'm saying like someone killed Din Djarin and then Grogu. Oh, became, and he went turned to be, the dark side of the force. My to, like, bad. He became a him. Sith, yeah, because of the anger he felt. Okay. Well that that makes sense too. But you know, if he were turned before and Din Djarin is technically his his master, you know, at this point, then it's just the it's just the rule of Sith. And he's wielding the dark saber. Oh, I just made Disney a billion dollars. Oh my gosh. Grogu and Mandalorian armor with the dark saber. Oh. I mean, could you imagine him flying around with his jetpack, fighting Ray with his dark saber, just like, you know? Oh my gosh. Wow. We're painting a picture that a yellow a yellow lightsaber that she'd be wielded, wielding, and then his black right. lightsaber, the dark saber. Oh man! Uh, as I'm as in, Scott would I'm tell in, us, dude. don't don't expound and make set your expectations so high, and then all she does is have a, a lukewarm 
Jedi battle with somebody. It's too late. We've already we've already went there. We we, we can't help it now. When Mark, Mark when you're on this podcast, it's it's just inevitable that we're going to get deep into the weeds and and think up some ridiculous thing that Disney should take into account. They should be listening to our podcast. They should. They should just hire us as writers. We could be the uh, ghostwriting yeah. team for Star Wars and Marvel and stuff. <laughs> well, just like take no credit, but we're the ones actually writing behind the scenes. Well, we get paid handsomely. Like we can all yes, do this for yes. a living. I Oh, yes. Yes. Anything that will, you know. But we can never talk about it. We can never talk. We, we're not. We like have a podcast, but we're not allowed to talk about it on Could the podcast. Could you imagine? We, Could you imagine? And then they're like, "Isn't it weird that the Vinny Bros like talk about this stuff?" And then they like they wink at each other, like it's because it sounds so outlandish. And then it kind of happens, like kind of happens. Kind of, kind of, yeah, we have to switch it up a little bit so people yeah. don't like catch on. But yeah, I'm. <clears throat> I cannot confirm nor deny that this is not already happening right now. So. But yeah, three big movies. And those are like, you know, major Star Wars feature any, films. Any announcement dates on them or like have any of them started no. filming? Or Yeah, no announcement dates. I mean, I would guess that that uh, Ray one is probably further in development. Well, you know, the Mandalorian one, too. Well, I would just Filoni imagine one. Dave Filoni just already has that script ready to go. He's just like, here's the movie I got to do. You just got to give us the, the green light to go make it. <laughs> yeah. Guys, 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 here. here. I wrote Look, this in this. high school. We're ready to go. <laughs> Actually, oh, I don't know man. how Dave, old Dave Loney is, but, you know, either way, the joke still sets. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Uh, yeah. that So big, big Star Wars movies that we're very much looking forward to. A um, <clears throat> lot of uh, little kind of minor announcements that we got here. Uh, we got a lot of um, news about the Acolyte, which is going to be a show. Um, like a live action be, or animation? It's live action. Um, it's going to be, let's see. It's a story from the perspective of the villains in the setting of the High Republic, Prime of the Jedi, and a time of peace. So it's basically going to be following the bad guys, you know, Sith, in the time where they're kind of underground and the Jedi are, you know. So you said they're following the, the bad guys, so they're not following the Jedi in this? Uh, it says from the perspective of the villains. So, so I would assume you that said the people that, that were underground and you're saying that the people underground are the villains? Yes, because uh, since at, when the, time have the, they high, been... <laughs> at yeah. the time of the High Republic... They're like, you know, the the Jedi are thriving. They're like on top. Yes, the, the villains you know. are on top and we're not following no, them. No, the Jedi are. <laughs> That's yeah, what it's yeah, saying. You, That's I, what so, but you're saying we're not following them and you said we're following the villains and then you say the villains are underground when you said clearly the villains are up top. No, I said the Jedi are up top. <laughs> it's going yeah. over your. I'm. I'm it is going I'm, over my head. I'm breaking I'm down the jokes. I can't catch everything. I'm breaking down the jokes for every Isaac. I'm insinuating <laughs> okay. the Jedi are the villains, and the <laughs> sure. Sith are the bad. Thank you. Or the Thank good you guys. for breaking that down for me, okay. Mark. I appreciate that. You're welcome. <laughs> all right, I'm all in for that. Is that supposed to be a Disney Plus show, or? Yeah that that will be a Disney Plus show. Um, so this is more. Uh, Leslie. Leslie Headland is the showrunner. I, I don't know what her official title is for this, but she was the one talking about it. She said, this is when the bad guys are outnumbered. They are the underdog. So it seemed like a perfect part of the timeline to explore in live action. I wish I remembered the timeline of like this, like when Sith had like outnumbered them. So it's like, yeah, you said during the High Republic. Right. Yeah. High Republic yeah. is the time period. And, you know. Because there was I a mean, time where there was like a hundreds and in like I think thousands of, of Sith, and then it became I'm forgetting the the Sith Lord's name, who basically was like, oh, rule of two, like you know, there should only be mm-hmm. two, blah blah blah. And then, anyways, wasn't uh, that Palpatine's buddy that, uh, yeah, that Pal- said that, Pal- or his uh, master? Yeah. That's you know, uh, still far. Pelagius was yeah. it Pelagius? Pelagius is his master. Yeah. So yeah, it'd still be way before that. So yeah. Yeah, it it'd was, be like all yeah. High Republic is like. Thousands, thousands of years yeah. before this. Do we have a, do we have a release date on that show? This is coming in 2024. Okay. So relatively soon. Potentially honestly. less than a year like, away. <laughs> yeah, right. Exactly. 
Um, and the, we, this was not released online, but there was, they did show some footage at star Wars celebration of, okay. of the acolyte. So. Okay. Pretty. Is this uh, like a backdoor show for Darth Revan? Do you, could you imagine? Oh gosh. Oh man. They just That'd like fantastic. They just were like, yeah, got you guys. It's the Revan show. <laughs> <clears throat> well, the, that's not higher. Like Revan's. I know, but like that's how they could Republic red herring too, right? us, where they're like, "Here's here's True. the synopsis of the story." And I mean, like, hey, oh, if that's the Revan. case, I want a Revan show too. So if that's mm-hmm. the case, I wouldn't be mad about it. Okay. We also live it. in a world where their marketing team was like, "We can't do that. If we want this to get hyped up and sold, we got to make it. A, we got to call it a Revan show." So yeah, right. Yeah, because they would they would garner significant hype from Star Wars fans for any type of Revan content i feel like so gosh i could just imagine if they did that it'd be the most ripped apart show because star wars fans are the worst so. oh yeah star wars fans are the worst if it dude. wasn't yeah because you have so many sources i feel like of you know of like canon or you know ex- extended universe for the backstory slash story of revan so like the they would ha- they would almost have to form their own backstory story from all of the pieces that we have you know, in different Star Wars content, which, I mean, to to us, I don't think we would care. I think that'd be awesome. We're not the the, the extreme <laughs> to the Star hardcore Wars. dudes who, eh, that's not canon. That's uh, that's something that we don't want to be a part of. Disney don't take Star Wars that, uh, that kind of revenue. <laughs> <laughs> oh gosh, man! You know what? And I just thought of, just thought of it too, but. Um, that Knights of the Old Republic remake got basically scrapped. Like that was, that was supposed to be coming out on PS5 like this year. And now it's just like in, in development limbo, like that probably won't ever come out. That makes me so sad. Those games are so good. Thanks a lot, Max. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, it's all Max's fault. Everything is Max's fault. So then they showed us a a little bit of little bits, a little bit of info on Skeleton Crew, which is a animated show. Um, It is focusing on a group of children going off into space for an unknown reason as of this point. But a, a it's, timeline uh, for when this happens in the Star Wars universe. We really don't have a lot of uh, information on this one. Um, Jude Law is one of the main voice actors. It's as be one of it. the children. No, 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 no. <laughs> there are there are actual <laughs> child voice actors that are playing the okay. children. But <laughs> Jude, hey, we got Jude Law is playing also the twelve year old. <laughs> <laughs> he's an alien, so we can Jude sound Law better. is also there. Yep. Um, but yeah, I mean, we didn't get a whole lot of information on that. They just uh, kind of said that Ke- Kathleen Kennedy was there. She spoke to it. She said the series is similar to the tone of 80s Amblin movies. Uh, <laughs> Skeleton Crew okay. may star kids, but it's not just for kids. So like basically no information at all. But It's like the um, Goonies cast- but in Star Wars universe. <laughs> but actually Star Wars. Cast members Ravi, Cabot Conyers, Kriana Cratter, Robert Timothy Smith were joined by Jude Law on stage discussing the love of Star Wars in the series. Um, so, it, you know, it was just like the cast members came out and basically um, said, hey, we're going to be in the Star Wars show. So but yeah, we don't really know a whole lot about that. I would guess that that is potentially going to be coming 2024. They announced as well. all these types of shows and movies, both animated and live action. Yep. And you're telling me Kathleen Kennedy can't greenlight uh, animated series or live action series of the sh- the shadow vampire like that that's all i want at this point uh i mean that definitely has to be just give on me the table, like one right? or two seasons you can even make it a limited series whatever i just want that so bad oh it's actually scheduled to be released on disney plus in 2023 so we are going to be getting it this year all right that's uh, it's it's described as a coming of age story. So like, you know, probably s- similar vein as like the Rebels slash Clone Wars shows where like it's made for kids, but it's got pretty adult like themes in it. Didn't George Lucas say in his uh, 
gosh, it's like an old interview, I think with Conan O'Brien back in the day, where he's, because it was before the Clone Wars um, series came out. And he's like, well, it's basically just like not for kids. It's for adults. Like that was a whole vibe on that. So it's like, you know, that's kind of what these episodes have been, except for Rebels is more for, for kids. But yeah, yeah. Rebels definitely was geared more towards kids. But even that, too, still had some pretty heavy themes in it. Yeah. Is it the same animation? I imagine at this point, it's like we're just gonna make all yeah, these. The they haven't animation. showed any animation at this point, so unknown what that's gonna be like. So I don't know why I changed at this point. You just make it all just look. That's what I love about the Star Wars universe is now in this day and age, anything that's been animated well, that can show up in the live action. So it's interesting that this is coming out this year and we still don't know like anything about it. That's just interesting to me. But hey, I mean, like, you know, more Star Wars content, the better for me. So, well, I think they, they can also, this is another thing, like the opposite of what I said before about like, yeah, they need to tell the Star Wars fans what's coming. But also at the same time, Star Wars fans are so hardcore and loyal for the most part that you can just be like, yeah, we got a new show coming. You're going to like it. You might, you might talk about a lot about it, but that'll get other people to come watch it then because your hate will make other people love it so much. So they know, they know their crowd. And they could give us nothing. Right, yeah. I mean, they know that Star Wars fans are going to eat up literally anything hey, that they drop. your slop. I hope you love it. <laughs> I love it so much. Thank you, Kathy. <laughs> the pigs just eat it up. They just keep eating it up. Even can't, though can't they'll, be, they'll be eating it up as they say, this is terrible. Oh, this is awful. This, oh, is, awful. Right. this is the worst Can I have some ever. more, please? <laughs> Come on. <laughs> when do we get fed next? <laughs> please, may I have some more? Yeah. Oh, gosh. Yep. Star Wars fans are are the worst and we did talk a little bit about indiana jones and the dial of destiny official trailer came out if you guys want to hear our thoughts on that you can check out our patreon um on the front end of this episode talked a little bit about that and uh other, other <laughs> does shia stuff, labeouf but, yeah, come back or not out. you'll find out there i guess you'll find out if you listen to the patreon episode Lars Mikkelsen was revealed as Grand Admiral, Th- Admiral thrawn like that was actually a separate announcement so he's got the ahsoka trailer we saw like the back of his head. And then the next day they revealed in an announcement that Lars Mikkelsen was playing grad Admiral Thrawn. So they're making a big deal out of this Ahsoka show as they should. Like I am absolutely jacked for this. Well, show. at this point, people, kids who would have watched, I mean, what I would have been my teens when that show came out, especially like when you talk about clone wars, you get Ahsoka, but it's like, mm-hmm. that's a few gener, you know, millennials, Gen Z and even the you know the young generation now will just you know over arcs the whole thing. So like we all care. We all we all want to see Thrawn finally. And even the hardcore fans that read him in the books. Well now now there's so much hype going on too about it that like even casual fans are like, oh Thrawn, like who's this guy? Like he's gotta be important. So they're like even if it doesn't, you know, convince somebody to go read the Timothy Zahn, you know, Thrawn novels. I think there's still going to be a little bit more interest in this show because of all of the hype that this is drumming up. Um, Definitely. And honestly, what they're, what Disney has done a fantastic job of is showing these different corners of the star Wars universe and showing that they're still interconnected. Like I think Marvel has a little bit of an issue with that because it seems like they have to be continually Marvel has to be continually telling us a story that is moving the universe forward. Star Wars doesn't really have that problem. Like they have, they can tell stories whenever they want, however they want. And it doesn't like, even if it's still connected to the rest of the universe and they've done a great job of like showing that and showing Easter eggs, but they don't have the expectation that this is building to something even bigger and better than the previous thing you're spot on it's like yeah you know they're so you can be they can be so cocky like, yeah we can drop you off anywhere between any of the movies and we're gonna we're gonna tell you a great grand story and it won't even affect what happens in the movie and you'll love it yeah right exactly like they definitely have a lot more freedom than marvel i feel like marvel is under a microscope right where now, you think it should so. be the opposite because marvel is such a like the whole marvel universe is like you can just tell basically anything. There's no linear story to that where Star Wars there there is because of the movies that already exist. So. And all of these, you know, like we had Book of Boba Fett, all of these kind of like spin-off shows that we're getting that, you know, fill in, 
you know, stories in the Star Wars universe. It's just, I, I've just been having the time of my life as a Star Wars fan these past like 10, 15 years. I feel like it's been just incredible. Lots and lots of good stuff and more stuff coming up. Um, they showed a, another gameplay trailer for Jedi Survivor, which is actually dropping this is it this month no march april yeah it's dropping this month april 28th like in a couple weeks here um <clears throat> i might have to get that this game. is the this is it, you've played the first one right oh Mark? oh yeah oh yes. <laughs> yeah yes. first one fantastic game honestly that game is like in my like top 10 games of all time like i i loved that game it was really really fun one of the very very few games that i've platinum because i just kept on playing um Cal Kestis was one of the ones I, I kind of referenced earlier. One of the Jedi that we got a completely new story for in Jedi Fallen Order. Um a Jedi that survived the purge. And there's a lot of I I, I feel I shouldn't say there's a lot. There's some Star Wars fans that were like, oh, there's how are there so many Jedi out there that haven't, you know, that survived the purge? Like, it seems like they're just making these up just just and there's too many Jedi. And it's like spoken like a true set, like just play the game. Like if you if you don't want to if you don't want to consume that content, you, you <laughs> it's not going back to what you're saying, eating on the trough. They're like, oh, why? Why is this Jedi still alive? <laughs> I love this game. Why is he alive? As, as you continue playing the game. Exactly. Uh, but yeah, I mean, they told an awesome story. Jedi Fallen Order is a fantastic game. And we even got some, a little, a few Easter eggs in, I believe it was Book of Boba Fett. They had a BD um, mm, yeah, the droid. droid. Mm-hmm. The Yeah, I think it's BD-1 is, is Cal Kestis's droid, uh, was in Book of Boba Fett. And I would imagine that we will be getting more references and I would not be shocked if we see Cameron Monaghan playing a live action Cal Kestis. I don't know how real this was, in the future. but I saw a fandom wire uh, article that said like, Oh yeah, there's an eerie sim- similarity between that, that guy. And it's like, <laughs> are there people, are we really at that point now? Cause it's been so many years where like, they don't remember that the first game they right. mo-capped him for, yeah. for this. Like, his whole, Your, I think I saw like it was satire, forth. but I definitely saw a post a while back that was like, you know, who would be the best fan casting for yeah. Cal Kestis in live action? It'd be Cameron Monaghan. Yeah, like that would be so cool. It's like, <laughs> hmm, yeah, 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 that'd be pretty cool. But um, yeah, they showed some gameplay for this. We already got a um, trailer for this initially, and this is apparently this Jedi Survivor is set like five years after Fallen Order, which is okay. in and of itself is already really interesting. To so me. that means I, we're, we're in the midst of the rebellion? No, 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 no. No, no we're not, because it, it takes about 20 years before before Star Wars Episode Four. Right, it, so... Right. Yeah, okay. Yeah, and... So we're the in the first be- one we're like set, thriving in the Empire, basically. Right, the first one is set... Um, gosh, he's... No, what Darth Vader's around. Like, yeah. Yeah, yeah, Darth Vader's there. Uh, he's, it's got to be, yeah, it's got to be set, like, during the... Yeah, that's why I wish they put, like, they, like, they, like, told us straight up, like, okay, guys, this happens between episode four, is there between these episodes of this animated series, this is your timeline, and you're like, oh, okay, thank you. <laughs> yeah, so it's, it's probably, like, during the events of the original trilogy, right around there, around that time. Uh, but, yeah, it's, so this, yeah, happens five years afterwards, we get... A lot of apparently there's a lot more customization options, which we had a decent amount. I feel like we first. had a ton. Like what yeah, more it was a, it was a solid amount of like customization well, options, but I like it's even got do, more. Like, uh, the the what do you call it? the thing that Kylo had? I think you can do that with your lightsaber. Oh yeah, the like the uh, guard guards or whatever. Or whatever. Yeah. yeah. Oh, that would be sweet. That'd be really cool. So yeah, there's there's more. Um, it, there's a focus on a couple new characters that Cal Kestis meets. I think we get, you know, uh, a couple appearances as well of the, of some of the old, um, characters in there. I think Seer is what her name was in the first one. Is that her name? Seer? Do over under, we get a bad batch character. That'd be, Ooh, that would be a perfect IP for a da- bad batch character to show up in. That would be phenomenal. 
I, I don't think that's likely because I think um, this is still EA, right? Like EA developed this game. I think even though they do um, want to incorporate a lot of the Star Wars universe, I think they're probably wary to include. Well, I think all, all it is on their on EA side is like, hey, here's our script, Star Wars. Can we can we get these right. characters? And they're like, mm, yeah, this one. Right. I guess, yeah. I think usually. They so do there's got to be some restrictions. There's got to be some, you know, they have to play the the game with Disney Star Wars for the use of the characters, all that stuff. So I don't think it's likely, but I mean, that's a that's a great point. This is like a perfect IP for a Bad Batch character to show up in. That would be so cool. And like get to play as a Bad Batch character for a bit. <gasps> that would be sweet. Or we should just get a Bad Batch game. That'd be cool. Make another Star Wars Battlefront that basically the storyline follows the Bad Batch. Yeah? Yeah. Because, like, I mean, I feel like those Battlefront... Yeah, right. Might as well. Uh, But, yeah, I'm, I'm definitely... This is one of the very few... I don't buy games, like, right off the bat anymore because it's just... I don't just don't have enough time to play them, but this is probably a day one purchase for me because I'm very excited for this game. Looks pretty sweet. Cal's got like a little little furry face on now. Looks older, <laughs> a little bit more rugged. He's faced Darth Vader. He's seen stuff and survived. Yeah. That that ending like sequence in Fallen Order is. That's intense, dude. Like when when sorry, this is spoilers for Fallen Order. So if you haven't played this game, maybe skip ahead 30 seconds. Yeah, if you didn't have time to play this during COVID, that's on you, bro. When Vader shows up, that moment, I like that was a moment where I like literally stood up and I was like, yes, like this is awesome. <laughs> I, <laughs> and he shows up and just like stands right behind um the sister, like whatever, whatever sister she is. And like chokes her out, kills her and stuff is like, that's yeah, Darth Vader is, right there. Ruthless. Kill, kill, basically killmonger Darth Vader. Yeah. Like when I think like just the, the power and the like, just what a great villain Darth Vader is. I think of that scene. And then that, that comic panel, where he's like surrounded by an army of just like, you know, like random dudes with guns and stuff. And one of the guys says like surrender. And he was like, um, he says something like all I see around me are, are dead men, basically something like that. And then he just like takes on the whole army himself. Like that was just like one of the hardest panels in all of star Wars comics for sure. But like comics in general, that's one panel that sticks in my mind. It's, that's a great one. So lots of cool things to looking forward to for uh, Star Wars Jedi Survivor coming out this month, April 28th. Let's see what else we got here for Star Wars Celebration. Those are kind of the big ones that I wanted to hit. They did announce Bad Batch Season 3. It's coming in 2024. Uh, that'll so it be must not be that hard really to sweet. dish out this animation to have... Yeah, dude. I mean, they are they are cranking it out at this point. Like, good for them. I hope they're, you know, not doing the Marvel thing and like skimping on their artists and stuff. <laughs> oh, another one. He, this is another one, too. And this is a little different because it's uh, it's I don't know. Contracted work is the right uh, is the right term. But Star Wars Visions Volume okay. Two trailer was announced or a with trailer the, came out now the same vibe like having uh, yeah anime, so animated anime. anthology series so like a different studio does like each okay. episode so that's okay. not like you know necessarily disney um star wars animators that are doing that series but that that was a phenomenal series that was yeah. a really cool it was yeah I would you it. rate that the the, the series it's so Visions, hard like to me one. it's hard to rate because it's Every episode's basically so different. It's so different. It's so different every episode. Yeah, I don't know. It's like, yeah, I should probably just give it a six out of six because it's just so different and new and 
based, you know, right. not all episodes are bangers, but like there's some like great visuals. You and- know, and Disney did a great job of that. I don't know if you ever watched the um, Amazon Prime did a series like that called like, I think it was called like Diabolical. It was like those kind of same things like set in the boys universe. And most of those just didn't hit for me. I think I liked, I think there was 10 episodes or something and like two of them. I was like, okay, those are cool. Yeah, the only one that sticks out in my mind for the, the boys is the one where it's like they use that that two people figure out they can use or whatever the name of the company is. I forget. Um, they like create Vought. a cream that makes yeah, Vot makes like a cream that gives you powers. So I just that's oh. the only one I remember. Where like two individuals. Yeah, use yeah, yeah. Okay, yep, yep. I remember that one too. Yeah, that was. Yeah, there there was some like you know one or two ones that stuck out and they were pretty good, but like. Visions did a way better job of making individual episodes that were engaging. And I I liked most of the like there were one or two maybe that I wasn't like crazy about in in Visions, but most of them were really, really good stories for like how short they were too, like 10 to 20 minutes. And they were able to tell, you know, a mostly completely story. Pretty awesome. Pretty awesome. So that'll be really cool. I don't think they, yeah, they didn't really share any details about that um, as far as when it would be coming out. I would assume 2024 or maybe even later. Uh, Let's see if I have any more info about that. Volume two. Yeah, they showed a couple quick shorts for like four episodes, though. So definitely check out all of these. uh, things on starwars.com they've got a list of all the full announcements of star wars celebration but we need to move on mark because we got to talk about the mandalorian episode seven of season three chapter 23 the spies of uh the mandalorian survivors come out of hiding uh man honestly i'm gonna just go right out and say it like this might be my favorite episode of season three. This was a phenomenal episode. Um, I don't know if I, <laughs> let's save the rating for the, for the um, so last part of it. Maybe before I started watching this with my beautiful wife, Kelly, I looked at her and said, I wonder if in this series, we're going to see those red emperor guards, but not like what they were at the end of the return of the Jedi. And now what they look like in the sequel trilogy, but like, uh, like you know, they're transitioning to that. Literally what I said to her. And then then they like get, get talked about and then show up. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. Uh, for those of you who have not seen this episode yet, we are going to be spoiling the entire episode. So here's your spoiler warning. This is... Prepare yourself. An Infinity Bros. Prepare yourself. Spoiler. glad we talked about that before i get the spoiler warning but whatever bro still you're this this far in why you listen why like you know (laughs) why are you listening you're an hour deep and you're thinking like oh they won't spoil this for us will they (laughs) yeah you know just uh it's a courtesy it's a courtesy to anybody listening to this show um (laughs) it's been more than 72 (laughs) hours get over yourself (laughs) <laughs> get over yourself uh but yeah this is <clears throat> this was a phenomenal episode so we i want to i want to actually take a step back here from from this episode specifically mark you haven't been on the, the pod for a while what have your thoughts and what is your general rating of the mandalorian season three up to this episode because i think this up this season has been getting the most kind of controversy criticism from you know star wars fans online um personally i've still absolutely loved and enjoyed it but there definitely have been episodes that just didn't hit for me so what are your thoughts about season three ben i have loved it through and through i'd probably give it an overall a 5.97 almost score um okay the only episode that i was just like i didn't hate it but I just was like yelling because of how naive the guy was, the guy who gets his mind scrambled, like that episode. I was mm-hmm. just like, oh man, I wish he was just yeah. more strong willed type of person and like kind of realize what was going on. Right. Um, but what I found most shocking thinking about all the episodes, the the one before this one with Jack Black and Lizzo, 
I loved that. I loved how it was just like quirky and fun. And like, just like how they basically sold the first season. It's basically a really hardcore space Western show. And sometimes in those, in those old shows, the main character had to do a side quest. And that's what happened. And I enjoyed that. And people like ripped that apart. It was like, okay. Right. Yeah. This whole show has been side quests, like after this, side quests. So I'm not sure why. Hardcore side quest after side quest. Yeah. I'm not sure why people really got upset about that episode. Like I do, you know what? I'll, I'll say that it was a little bit of a shock to see Jack Black, Lizzo and Christopher Lloyd all in the same episode. And when they come together for that final scene and they're all in there together, I was like, what is happening right now? Like <laughs> I was, I was, I will admit I was a little kind of distracted by everything that was going on. And then Lizzo turns around and knights Grogu randomly. It was yeah, just like, it was great stuff. What? He's, what he's, he's, he's a on? Jedi Knight now. <laughs> I, I was like taken out of it a little bit, but still fantastic episode. And Christopher Lloyd, like Jack Black, those guys nailed it to me. Lizzo was the one that I was like, I could have, I could have taken anybody in the role that she was in, whatever. But Jack Black, oh, the dude is on fire. Like, he was fantastic in Super Mario Bros. His voice, Bowser voice, is just chef's kiss. Incredible. And this episode, like, what are you expecting Jack Black to do when he shows up in a Star Wars episode? Like, this was it. This was what you expect him to do. <laughs> I just I don't know what people are getting so upset about. I just, you know, it's Scott Higa, our good friend Scott Higa, has been pretty critical of all of the celebrity um appearances in this show. And I just don't think they're that bad. I just, like I, I think maybe he gets like distracted by those and that's that's what like takes him out of it. But like I, I don't most of the celebrity, you know appearances in the show have been like pretty awesome i i've loved almost all of them so i don't know man i don't see what the hate is all about for those episodes but i think i think despite all that i think so far this is probably my least favorite episode or not episode excuse me um season of the mandalorian that's still not to say that this is a bad season because i think i'd so far including um, episode seven here, I think I'd give this a 5.5 out of six. Like it's still really good and really fun and honestly has potential to get better with this, with this last episode. So we'll see what happens. But anyways, a lot of, a lot of criticism for this uh, season of the Mandalorian that some, you know, some is maybe uh, justified, but definitely a lot of it seems blown out of proportion. All right, chapter 23, The Spies, we finally get uh, the Mandalorians heading to Mandalore. Um, they finally team up with, you know, what the remaining factions of Death Watch and the the sect of the way, they kind of team up and they're like, hey, we got to be Mandalorians together. Bo-Katan uh, gets to lead them to Mandalore along kind of with the guidance of the armorer, which uh, Zane has gone on record to say that armorer is sketch and potentially could be well that's what's um, called the spies so yep. when you pluralize spy. spies somebody's in there somebody's a spy there's not um, just one <laughs> spy there's at least two yeah so we'll, we'll talk about that in just a just a few minutes here, i'm but... i'm already to go ready to go into the weeds so yeah hurry up <laughs> okay oh right, well, well let's dive in then mark what right. you got for us so when we finally get there and then there's like a pirate ship of Mandalorians. Um, this ties back after once we get to the end where we find out the a sect of the Empire has been on Mandalore. I th my theory is those those Mandalorians are actually part of the Empire. Like those are Moff Gideon guys dressed as Mandalorians because the ones that are sick all of a sudden are now in the ship with uh, the what's her name again the armor who probably is potentially one of the spies, the one that lived, stayed on Concordia, not on Mandalore. You know, I think it's leading towards that, that she might be a, you know, a double agent in a sense. So that's my theory. 
So like those those sick Mandalorians are actually going to be sabotaging the ship. So. Mm, yep. Okay. And we did get like a little flash of them them going back to the ship, and Armor basically tells them to prepare, you know, for the the sick Mandalorians. So. Yeah, lots of interesting stuff. So we get to Mandalore and we almost kind of out of nowhere. It's not out of nowhere because it's definitely foreshadowed um, in the beginning or throughout this season. But we get Moff Gideon and this this uh, episode is like almost focused on him, which is uh, it was a little bit jarring because we haven't seen him since the end of episode or season two. Still so menacing and like oh he is oh man he's just like a sociopath yeah yeah Giancarlo Esposito plays him phenomenally just absolutely and and like you know I I actually have this is a total side note I have Star Wars villainous like the board game Star Wars villainous Moff Gideon is one of the characters in in Star Wars villainous and I was like that's kind of weird, like to stack him up with like Darth Vader, Kylo Ren, General Grievous, like all those guys. But after watching this episode, like, yeah, with it's not weird like, with his new suit upgrade. <laughs> yeah, dude, his suit. Oh, man. OK, Basically, let's get into that. Like, we get to the end deal. Yeah, the this last like 10, 15 minutes of this episode were maybe the best 10 minutes of the entire season, in my opinion. When they get into, like, they get trapped, like, Bo-Katan leads them down there. They find Moff Gideon's base, and Bo-Katan's like, what the heck? Like, what? what is Oh, yeah, when they started walking through there, and I'm, like, again, watching with the beautiful wife, Kelly. I'm like, um, that that door hallway is very much built by the Empire. Very ominous. It's like, what's happening here? Already on Mandalore, too, like... I lo- I actually love that Moff Gideon was like, oh yeah, I'm going to Mandalore and I'm going to make Mandalore my base. <laughs> like, that but clearly is, had oh. had either made it way before they showed up, or like the Empire bombed it and it's like, yeah, we're just going to make a base here and still farm yeah. their well, resources. I, I kind of assumed that, and then he's um, taking over that base. Right. I kind of assumed that Moff Gideon had done, you know, like like so they bombed the Empire bombed well, Mandalore. I, oh. Yes, like all that happened, but at some point, either under his direction after they bombed it, they started building a base. I'm saying like it wasn't built post the New Republic took over. That that'd be my opinion. Oh right, okay, sure. Like that yeah. that base yeah. already existed, and Moff has just now yeah. claimed it as his home. Oh, okay, gotcha. That, that's okay, my I see theory. What you're saying. Okay, that. all right, yeah, I could see that too. I I was just assuming that because I go back um, to when he... they had their their secret their shadow tribunal. Um. Where they're talking about resources, I'm just like thinking, there's no way they're spending that those type of resources to build a new base for for Moff Gideon. That's what I'm thinking. Like that base had to have had existed. And you know, there's probably some uh, merit to the you know, like all these like. So we get the Shadow Council, and that's like all of the kind of leftover, the remnants of the Empire, all these warlords that are basically trying to yeah. the the trying to gain the power for themselves, yeah. but. They, I mean, they reference Thrawn coming back um, throughout kind of that council. But, I mean, all <laughs> yeah, these so the, warlords. The one guy's like, oh, yeah, Thrawn's coming back. I, I talked to him, and then Moff Gideon looks at him and like, basically saying, I know everything that's going on throughout the galaxy because I hear <laughs> yeah. everything that's going on. And not one ounce is talked about Thrawn. Yeah. Moff and just looks like, at him and this- just straight up is like, hmm, interesting. interesting. Yeah, like, just, just, I don't know if he's like, truly believes that that like the other guy's lying or like what's going on but yeah it was that was like yeah. an intent like clearly just like him oh he just does so great off Gideon's probably that was great not Darth Vader like like power wise but like evil might be more evil than evil Darth Vader. oh yeah evil wise he's he's definitely there for sure yeah. and like as as he's probably about as menacing as you can get for just being like a normal human being yeah. Like, you know, not somebody with powers like a Sith or or anything like that, like just a, an evil guy. Yeah, he's he's up there with, you know, most menacing Star Wars characters like yeah. dude is he's crushing it. He's crushing it in that role. And now that he's got his like best car Mandalorian like suit, I was like, holy moly, this Which dude is a threat co- now. 
Would she put a crown on the helmet? A Mandalorian helmet with a crown. Like, what the, the heck? The dude is just <laughs> insane. He is, and it's amazing. Yeah. <laughs> I absolutely yeah. love it. Uh, but yeah, anyway, so we get this, this, you know, they get trapped down there. Um, basically, they end up fighting their way out. But in that meantime, we get all these, which we see these dudes well, when and, they land, and we too. Get, and they get ambushed when they go to the... Yes, yeah, sorry, yeah. Big, uh, but when they go to the Great Forge, they yeah, get they ambushed go. by I, these... Troopers uh, that also have Beskar you know, armor. Yes. And that's kind of like another shock. Like we, we kind of have seen glimpses of the, actually earlier in the episode, we saw, we saw those troopers. Well, de- definitely um, in that, as yes. Moff Gideon was definitely that moment. It's like, like that. Clearly someone has told them where they're going to be at, you know, at some point. Right. right. I yeah. did not think we were going to be led to a base. That was the, until we saw that hallway. Was that like, was oh, the okay. twist for sure. Yeah. Yeah. And it was straight in like Moff Gideon's base too. It wasn't just like some random base that Moff Gideon met them at in like, trap them or i guess it could still be but i'm assuming well, that this and, is moff gideon's think, base and i think we're supposed to be led to that the mandalorians that are the the spies are the ones that were hired to bust them out but i don't yeah. think that's the case in my i think it is yeah. i do think it's for sure the armor that's yeah armor she, like she's definitely hiding something yeah. and it makes the most sense that she's hiding that She's somehow, you know, in league with Moff Gideon for some reason. Yeah. Um, I, I wouldn't be completely shocked if she's hiding something else, but that makes the most sense, I feel like. So, yeah, we'll, we'll see what happens. But um, uh, last thing I want to say, the again, we get the reveal of Moff Gideon. They kind of do a little bit of a skirmish battle. Bo-Katan uses the Darksaber to bust him out of the of the like hold that they're in and Paz Vizla, this dude, Big boy. I've had kind of a, I've had kind of a love hate relationship with him through this series. Like I love that he, he's like kind of the typical, like he's full of passion guy, full of passion. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. sure. You, yeah. You can use that full, to describe he has lots of passion. In that, okay. <laughs> lots of passion. Uh, I, he's like the typical, like, big tank guy right like he's big he's got this giant gun uh he is like really powerful but he's also seems like he's dumb like you don't really get that sense until like i feel like this season honestly when mando and bo katan like lead that party to go rescue his son and he just like and this is like not this is not necessarily disrespect to him but like he follows everything that they do and to, to me, it was like, I mean, like, this is your son, right? Like, wouldn't you want to be the one, like, leading the party, like, doing all this stuff? But he totally, like, just follows everything. And I, I, I don't know. The vibe is that he's, he's like, not, not the smartest guy in the yeah. world to me. Still super great warrior, everything. So my kind of, I don't know, I was kind of, like, torn on him. He's, he's really cool in some parts. Like, when he fights Din you're in for the dark saber like that's a phenomenal part of i think yeah. it's season is that season one season, I, beginning of season two maybe i don't remember when that no happens. for the dark saber i feel like that might yeah. have been the the mandalorian episodes of the book of boba fett no way really do you think so I, i'll have to go back and rewatch this now that's where it's like they <laughs> it all, could be they all, honestly so they all, they all flow, flow together, in my yeah. mind together now that's just like right. so it's like really hard to pinpoint it without looking yeah. it up so yeah, definitely. So, but anyways, Paz Vizla comes out, takes out the whole crew of like Beskar armored oh, before, troopers by himself. Before this that happens, that was just yes. Before this happens, we also see Din Djarin before this get captured. And yes. Taken away. Oh yeah, yeah. Definitely forgot to mention that he he gets captured by Moff Gideon, yeah. taken away. Oh, he, he does not get away. <laughs> He was taken away before, and then this this all then rebels. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So then Paz Vizsla kicks butt, finally gets taken down Thanks by me. those Praetorian guards. Yeah, which the guards the guards showed up, which we got when he they when showed Moff up. Gideon had his council meeting. <laughs> He's yes, like, I need he I need these guards. I need some <laughs> security. <laughs> Good thing he had them because he needed yeah. them for for Paz Vizsla right there. Oh, and gosh. I thought for a second Paz Vizsla was going to take these like at least one out. 
He uh-huh. seemed like he was. Yeah, uh, he he no, was ready they, to take him out, but they out. were just they they had the right weapons and the right mm-hmm. set of skills. Yep. So. Yep. Yep. So then that kind of honestly ends the episode, and we're I want to do mention too. So, um, what's her face? Katie O'Brien plays her. Uh, Elia Kane. She's been kind of like, you know, she's obviously working with somebody through this season. Mm-hmm. We got her in that episode that you mentioned with the doctor and she yeah, fries his brain like because apparently where... nobody in the New Republic is paying attention to him. Because everyone room. thinks the Emperor is, like, that's literally the, the world that they're in. Like, the Emperor's dead, so yeah. nothing bad could be happening. Yeah, nothing bad could happen. So she's she's obviously in league with somebody. We find out finally it's Moff Gideon, which I think, you know, all of us could have, you know, yeah. seen coming. But... Uh, she still is working with him to kind of warn him about everything they're doing. But we have, I, do you think that could be a reference to the spies that they're talking about? Or you're, or you're thinking it's definitely a Mandalorian, like, gosh, yeah, I mean, yes, spy. it could be, she could be technically the spy that, you know, there's like the empire still inf- infiltrating the new Republic. Right. Um, that could be it. Yes. Uh, but with that thought, it, it brings me to the, the episode before was it the episode before where uh like the, the x-wing fighter finds the the ship that moff Gideon yeah. was supposed to be on and it's like right. you know yep. mandalorian a couple episodes ago yeah scatter you know fingerprints all over basically mm-hmm. and now i'm thinking like that's probably what might show up is that's how bo katan's become an enemy of the new republic is because he she's with those he those guys frames her mm. yeah that could be it so mike could you know okay interesting yep because I think that, like, how do you, yeah, like how do theory. we continue the story to, like, push her where, like, she can't go save Din Djarin right yeah. away? So it's like, right. I mean, and, this next episode is going to be, there's no way they wrap everything up in this next episode. They're no, going to leave a lot no. of, like, and, Right, they, they, they're going to have to do another season of Mandalorian, and Moff Gideon, I mean, the dude is, he's the villain of this, of this show. Yeah. So he's going to survive this finale, and he's going to be continue to be the main villain i think and well i think we four. need we need a thrawn gideon Matt. We oh meet yeah up at some point, yeah we so. get a thrawn thrawn gideon I, meet up that would be sick. i wouldn't doubt if we get gideon in ahsoka yeah yeah definitely could see that happening or at least in a like uh you know um referenced for sure yeah. absolutely and potential appearance as well i could definitely see that um yeah Lots of lots of cool things. I and again, Grogu gets an IG droid to. <laughs> that was hilarious. To yes, drive around. Yes, yes, yes. yes. Repurpose no, IG eleven. No, no, uh... no. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that see that whole IG eleven storyline was so weird to me in the first part of this season. Like it's so weird that they spent so much time and focus on that through the first two episodes, and then they're just like, ah, screw it. We'll just it's, use this astromech <laughs> that yeah, we get we'll, from we'll Peli Motto. <laughs> like, yeah. What? Okay. That was that was weird. Uh okay, Mark. What was your rating of uh this episode? Chapter twenty three, oh, The Spies. Six out of six. It it was fun. It had some it pushed the story farther. It it yeah. split the story to like, okay, what's going on? It made me yeah. think deep in the weeds. Um, it was, you know, you got to see some Din Djarin fighting and then clearly like, you know, oh my gosh, what are they going to do moments? And they pulled in my heartstrings with, with killing, uh, uh, big boy Paz. Yeah. Paz. Um, oh, that was a little, dude, I like, little I, like, I thought like this pulling. dude just saved his son. Now he's going to have an orphaned boy. <laughs> Oh, it just oh, oh being a, being oh. a parent now it hurt me so much, dude. Right, it dude. Just, being a I would, parent I would makes have you been, cry so much more. I happens. would have not. I might have like you know welled up a little bit prior to having a child, but like now I'm just like mm. oh my gosh, like oh yeah, absolutely. it hurt. It hurt my it hurt my yep. jellies. <laughs> I'm I'm on the same page with you. This is a six out of six. Infinity snap for the for the episode of uh, chapter oh, twenty three. This and we got. And another like Easter egg. One of the shadow empire, or, or one of the shadow people, or shadow people. Yes, was a hux. Shadow so, people, hux. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Not the same hux That's, that we get, but like clearly a relative. I'm assuming. So yeah, I. This is so. This is exactly 
what I want when I'm watching these Star Wars shows. I want them to show that they're interconnected, that there is a grand like universe scheme that all of these shows are taking place mm-hmm. in, but they don't have to, you know, like each show is not dependent on another. Like they're all independent shows, but they're all in the same universe. And that, yeah, that, they're all, they're like, all affected Hux by the big on that, stuff. Hux being on that council was a perfect Easter egg example mm-hmm. of that. It was just like, oh, this is, that's great. It's nothing too much. They don't put a lot of emphasis on it, but it's there and it's, it's awesome. So that was again fantastic. Um, yeah, all right. This is we don't have a whole lot of time left, but I want to get something from you. What are your we've talked been talking about it kind of the last like 10, 15 minutes here, but what are your predictions for the finale of The Mandalorian season three? Um like you said, Moff Gideon ain't gonna be killed. Uh I I feel like if they do the route where the rest of the Mandalorians become an enemy of the New Republic. I think we're going to get them escaping. But, like, to get Din Djarin out at this point, you need you need a Jedi. And yeah. is this how Ahsoka, be, like, this is how we slingshot Ahsoka into her show? Does she come back to help out? Does Luke come back to help out? Do we get some other Jedi here? To, like, that's where, like, that's my whole thought. It's like, you needed Luke to save him last season. So, uh, like, Grogu ain't going to do, like, is Grogu going to, like, do his <laughs> praying thing to summon a Jedi? Like, dude, I don't know. I don't know. Like, there's yeah. so many, there's going to be so many cliffhangers in this that are going to keep us talking until the next season comes out. Which, yeah. which then leads me more towards that I think Ahsoka shows up. So then that, like, then we don't have to wait a few months for, then it builds right. that hype for that show. So, yeah. Definitely. I think that's a very, very good likelihood. Um, I don't have any more predictions other than armor is sketch. She's hiding <laughs> something. I don't know what it is, but she's hiding something. She's um, she potentially very well could be, you know, the the spy um, that we've been referencing for sure. But I, I think it's a good chance that a Jedi shows up to save the day. And Ahsoka seems like the most likely choice. So yeah. I could definitely see that happening. Could you imagine well, if Mark, they if they're like this is where Mace Window comes back? He's alive, everybody. <laughs> oh, Mace Window, he's alive! <laughs> oh my gosh, that would be amazing. <laughs> Just randomly shows up, and he's like, "What? But, hey, what is happening?" Drogu did his thing, and this is the one who showed up this time. <laughs> he summoned you. <laughs> he summoned Mace Window, yeah. all the way back from the dead. Well, Mark, thank you so much yeah. for joining me. It has been a blast of an episode. If you want to hear more Infinity Bros tomfoolery check out the patreon episode of uh of this portion of this episode um yeah thanks mark been a blast man glad to be back hopefully i not suspended for a longer period this time but uh i I guess uh, this episode is (laughs) this episode is in review of the infinity rose high council Council. and you'll hear from us you'll hear from the jarrett's or you're here from the Jarrett's exactly. Yep. Like it's a it's like a huge coliseum of Jarrett's, just like the Council of Kings, and everybody's yeah, basically just going that. Like every there's, Jarrett is there's just going. Three crazy. high Jarrett's, and then there's a bunch <laughs> yes. of crazy Jarrett's. Yeah, yeah. But it's none of the other just, Infinity Bros. No, no we're, we're not part of it. Yeah. No, not at all. It's like the Council of Ricks, but they're Jarrett's, but they're actually more like Kings. You know, you get it, guys. You're all we're <laughs> yeah. all nerds. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You guys get it. Thank you, Infinity Bros Universe, for making us a part of your podcast listening experience. Wherever you're listening, however you're listening, thank you so much for making us a part of your day. We love you, 2000. Have an awesome day. Bye. Thanks for tuning in to the Infinity Bros Podcast. You can find the Infinity Bros on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter at the Infinity Bros. Feel free to send listener feedback via email at infinitybrospodcast at gmail.com.